Broadcasting from Nagoya, Japan, and this is the second city I've been to. Um, my trip here has been nothing like I expected it to be, um, and I have been traveling by myself, so that has been super scary. Um, but I think I've got things down by now, and I have a lot of good friends that I've met on this side of the world. Um, so it just goes to show you if you talk to people on Instagram, eventually you will find your way around. Um, Anyways, uh, so let me tell you a little bit about Japan in the summer. It is friggin' hot. Like, it is just... you. I cannot describe how hot it is as a Canadian. And I'm in the mild part of Canada. So I'm from Vancouver, Canada, and it is... It never reaches anything above 26 degrees Celsius in Vancouver, in the mainland. Um, and I came into 34 degree weather with full humidity. Now think about this, not only is my home at 26, but we also get arctic winds. So our wind here is cold, so even on a hot day we will be getting cold wind. Whereas here you breathe heat. Oh, quick interruption, these things are the best ever. I didn't learn about them till I got to this city, but what they are is basically cooling cloths. And these things are like a piece of paper that have a chemical in it. You put it on your skin and it will soak up your sweat and it will also give you an icy cold feeling. So you're walking around not dying over here. Um, I've seen heating pads, but I've never seen cooling cloths. They also apparently have a spray you can spray on your clothes and then underneath your clothes you'll stay cool. You can't put it on your skin, but it helps you kind of just deal with the heat. Like, this is something I wish I had, because the first time I came here I had heat stroke. Um, so I lost all the cool foods that I had eaten into the toilet. Um, but otherwise, my trip has gone great. Uh, and I'll tell you a little bit about the cities that I didn't happen to be in cosplay for because it's been too hot and to be in a wig, or I didn't manage to dress up for it because I literally, I wanted to wear as minuscule clothes as possible. So let's look into Osaka a little bit. So Osaka was the first city that I landed in when I came over to Japan. Um, I'm s or I was rather staying in a little little segment of it called Owada, and although it was gorgeous, um, I had a really hard time there because I am not a Japanese speaker, and nobody in that particular area spoke English, and none of the trains really had any um, romanji, so. I got lost a lot and I came into a zone that was super hot and therefore I got heat stroke the first couple of days. Um, so I spent a lot of time basically sweating and throwing up. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit about Osaka, at least from what I learned from everybody around that area. Uh, or from other people. Uh, the Japanese consider people from Osaka their own little culture. Uh, they are considered to be kind of hickish, but in all honesty that makes them super friendly, super laid back, they have a lot of street food, and generally everybody around there was very kind to me despite the fact that I would say uh, a very minuscule sentence and then they would talk back to me in full and I would just kind of have to be like, wakarimasen, which is, I, I don't really, I don't really understand. Um, and so I basically, the only site that I really got to see was something called Shitonoji Temple. And Shitonoji Temple, from what I gathered, because again, everything was in Japanese, um, is that it's a temple and it was the first real establishment in the area for the Buddhist religion. Um, and so it's really big. There's tons of little mini shrines inside of it. And not only is it a great um, place to walk around in because it, it is gorgeous and it is just really kind of cool, but each shrine had a different way to summon or talk to or pray to that deity um, or deity, deity. And uh, you could ring a bell, you could hit a gong, you could have a meditation bowl, you could um, waft smoke. 
it was honestly just a really cool experience seeing the elders in that area come and legitimize what was going on. Um, otherwise, I spent every day getting lost. Um, and finally, I got so angry that I just wrote sentences from Google Translate over and over and over again until I remembered them. Um, so yeah, Osaka, beautiful. I got takoyaki from there, which is one of their specialty dishes. In Vancouver, you could totally get it, but it comes with everything. Versus in Osaka, you basically, you can modify the ingredients. So you can either get it without anything, or you can get it with different bits of things. Um, it was really cool. I ended up throwing it up because I was heat, you know, what do you call it? Because I had a heat stroke, but if I didn't have heat stroke, I'm sure that I would have kept it down. It would have been even better. Um, I've been living off of onigiri, which is you can get at any 7-Eleven here. And 7-Elevens are convenience stores in Canada and in America. I don't know about Europe, um, but they usually have like, they're, they're similar to gas stations and they have food, but in Japan this food is actually good and it's not loaded with preservatives. The one thing that they are missing though is Slurpees. They have no Slurpees over here in their 7-Elevens. Um, but I'm not complaining because they have other things. Um, so uh, their 7-Elevens are also referred to as Combini, which means convenience store. So I went to Combini's to basically stay alive. I vomited everything up. I got really lost on transit due to lack of Romanji. I went to Shitanoji Temple, recommended to me by my friend at Foreign Mist on Instagram. Yes, that plug is awesome. Uh, she is a Norway cosplayer and also a world traveler. So if you follow her Instagram, you might see some really cool things. And in other, you know, other news, I'm basically alive now and moving on to another city. And I will talk to you later. Very short video, right? Bye. <laughs> also, super shout out to this Airbnb place. For those of you that don't know, Airbnb is like renting a bedroom or like a room from someone. This guy, Mito, basically has a tripod and working lights. So yeah, this whole facility is designed for a photo shoot. The negative side is that there's no bath, but you can go to a public bathhouse for that.